For all intents and purposes, this is a training video from step one through to where it looks good. And I believe at Window Revival, we've refined this process so much that when people walk in, they'll look at your windows and think that you've got new windows. But the first step in refurbishing the windows, be careful about how you set up, be ultra careful about people's properties. Some of the downfalls of this uh, business, well not so much downfalls, you're in the private recesses of their house, invading their space. Little things like, as you go into the front door, fold up the drop sheet so you've got walkways through the house, because people have spent thousands on renovations. You've set yourself up, the clients uh, are happy, you've got your drop sheets down, we're about to start painting some windows. Step one is we take the fly screen out, as you can see Quentin doing here. That comes out, and that goes out into the backyard, and the, and the fly wire and the spline rubber gets stripped out of it, which we'll show you afterwards. Second step is you take the sliding sash out. On this one, as you can see, it's already taken out, but for example purposes here, I've got one from the upstairs bathroom. We've moved from the fixed frame on the house now out into the yard, and we're gonna go through all the aspects of prepping up a window sash masking up and getting ready for spray. The first step here is we need to take the handle off. Now some handles slip off very easily, straight out. Others have little bits and pieces of, of screws in here. They're all different. Step one is to take the handle off. Now step two is we've got felts. Every window is different. This one's got four, one on, the, one on the top or one on the bottom and one up either side. If you look down closely in here, you'll see how this sort of comes to a T-junction. This one slips out easy. If only they were all like that, but they're not. Next step is we've got to take the rollers out. This particular type of one comes out quite easy. It's just a matter of a, a screw on the side and it slots straight out and slot back in. And you obviously can't spray with it in because it's going to look terrible and that will jam up the roller and it won't work properly. Let's move on now to the surface preparation so we can get paint to stick to it. Let's face it, anyone could put paint on, but we want to put it on so it stays on because you don't want to be getting called in two months, three months, four years time. You, you want a product that you're going to be proud of and you can walk away of knowing that you've done your best. With the sash here, you'll notice how piece just scouring this one. We don't have to sand it right back to nothing. This one, the surface is quite good, so it just needs to be keyed up. Now what that means is it's just roughing it up a little bit so the etch primer can stick to it. Now after Peter scoured this down, he'll then get his thinners and rub the thinners over to take off all the residue and dust. And from there, he can move on to masking it up, just like you saw the boys do on the fixed panel on the house, and it's ready for spraying. But we've started the masking up process now. You'll notice he's lifted up and over the rubber. Why we do that? Because we don't want to spray the rubber, because if we do that, it'll only peel off after a couple of years. So we do that, and then he'll run his standing knife up along there. He'll trim it off, and we're not going to have any problems at all. But it's round in here that's really important. If we're to focus in on here now, just tilt it up a bit, Pete, other way. So we look in there, and we can see there's lots of dust and build up in there. So he's got to get the the scourer and turn it sideways and get it in there and get it clean. Because that's part of the spraying service that you have to spray. And it's one of the bits that can easily peel if it's not cleaned and prepped right. We're moving over here to the thick sash to spray it now. A couple of little tricks, I can't go through all of them, but one of them is you always prime the side that doesn't have the felt. Prime that side first, then we flip it around and prime the side with the felts. When you put the final coat on anything, whether it be a fixed sash in the house or a window here, on the final coat you always get a little bit of wrap around overspray and you can't help it because the paint dries and it just gives that little bit of a sandy effect. But if we do it this way, the felt side actually sits on the outside and the screen goes in front of it. No one feels it, no one can touch it and no one knows it better, okay? And that gives you a nice flush smooth finish here so when the people walk in, they go, wow, that looks new. We're moving over to the fixed panel now. Jamie's just finished the fixed sashes off. I'd like you to notice something up on the ceiling up there. You'll see a different colour tape. On the wall over there, we've got the yellow tape, and on the ceiling, we've got the blue tape, and there's a reason for that. 3M is one particular type of tape maker, but, but there are other types, and there's different grades of stickiness. Some of them are really, really fine for places like ceilings. We've got the, this is the lowest grade that you can get. 
we like to use it on ceilings and also if this was the internal we use it on the internal window reveals so it doesn't again pull off paint as you can see the first thing is you can hear the gun going but there's no paint coming out it's just air making sure we've got a good surface to work till you probably go up there on the right hand side work right hand over left hand same principle as doing the sashes just a nice duster come across thicker and build up your film Jamie had already pre-primed the inside so he's just going in now and notice that he didn't take the hose in the smart thing to do is set up a second hose on the inside because you don't want to be dragging hoses over the top of windows and pulling off paint the one on the inside one on the outside as I mentioned on the fixed sashes, it's all about angle spraying and getting down there and making sure that you're getting into all the little nooks and crannies. Notice how Jamie comes down on his angle at, as he comes down this fix there. You've got to really get in there so the paint gets in there. And notice on the uh, top and bottom rails, you've got to get that gun on the angle right up underneath it. Otherwise the natural angle of the spray goes across and you've got this little line of brown or primer and it looks terrible. Jamie's putting the final coat on now. Now the trick to the final coat, and this comes with lots of practice, is that we want to put it on as thick as possible and as smooth as, as, smooth as possible, but take it to where it's just about to run, but it doesn't. So it's just sitting there, and that's the art of spraying windows, because when people come over to look at it, it's like thick plastic. But that takes practice, and we can show you how to do that. So if we learn the right way from the beginning, step by step by step, we'll have a successful business and you'll be a proud owner of a window revival business. We've just finished taking the plastic off now and we've gone and got Seth, he's the owner of the house, to come down and have a look and cast his opinion over it. I've asked him what he thought of our approach from the initial time we come and knocked on the door and gave him the quote. I actually did the quote here to bring in the tradesmen around and our professionalism and obviously to the finished product. Yes. Well, it started from just talking to you initially. Yeah. The ads we would seen and all that didn't do you justice to your own approach. And that's what I was more interested in listening to you, what you had to say. And that's where the truth comes from. So we were most impressed and it didn't take us long. I know you drove away thinking you mightn't have got the order, but we've talked about it. But with your approach, your honesty and everything about it, and your knowledge of the product, it's worth, it just swayed us back to what we wanted. And after now seeing what's happening, aren't we glad we did? <laughs> <laughs> My um, supposed honesty or sincerity means nothing if, if the guys that come on the site, A, don't know what they're doing, or B, don't care about people's property. And as, as you would know looking at the video, if, if you don't care about people's property, we aren't going to do a good job and we aren't going to get referrals. So I'd just like to ask Seth, well, well, what do you thought about Jamie and the boys? Well on that stew is, it's 100%. The blokes have been so fair dinkum, and they've been so attentive to every detail that was going on. And to me, I know a little bit, I've done as much as this, but, but they're doing a 100% job. What more can I ask? Nothing at all, Seth, as long as you sign the cheque. <laughs>